Hey everybody, my name is Will and I'm here in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's the largest city park in the United States and it's here to protect these mountains behind me, the McDowells. Today we're going to take a hike on one of the most beautiful trails in the preserve, it's called Bell Pass. We're going to talk a little bit about these mountains and we're going to talk a little bit about the people and plants that have lived here for thousands of years as well. So stick with me and let's learn a little on the trail together. especially if you haven't hiked a whole lot before because you're not going onto any dirt trails the whole way up you're just in suburbs like if you want a good you know literally gateway to the wilderness the gateway trailhead is a great place to get it because you're still in the suburbs but you can head on out into the mountains from here without really having to think about like, oh, do I need four by four? Do I need, am I, am I comfortable driving on dirt roads? You don't have that problem at this trailhead or most of the ones in the McDowell Preserve. Start of the gateway trailhead here. This is the gateway saddle. That this is like the most popular hiking trail in the area. We are going to come counterclockwise up gateway, continue up to Bell Pass. This side is the steeper. This is the steeper side, yeah. So we're coming up the, uh, the, the looser, easier side to come up. We will get our elevation in on the way up to Bell Pass. Thompson Peak and this knob here where the sun is shining. Yeah. That's Bell Pass. The sun is shining on it almost perfectly. Cool. It's actually really cool. This is going to about 3,200 feet and change. Okay. So 700 feet short of Thompson Peak. Um, our vertical gain over the course of this trail will be And it's about eight miles round trip. So That's actually really cool. Yeah, those would hurt. Oh yeah, when I was a Boy Scout, there was one time where my dad took us on a group hike. The scout leader walks us through like a choya forest, and choyas will graze right off if you touch them, and they will latch into your skin, and they will latch deep. Best way to get them off is just by grazing them off with a rock. Um, if they get really deep, you might have to take them out with pliers. Choya balls, because they fall off so gently, you'll see them on the trail like this, and I always try to like just kick them off. But for a bunch of seven and eight-year-olds just walking through a forest, a choya like that, not fun. Not fun. <laughs> not fun. It was not a shortcut either. Uh, my dad gripes about that trip all the time. He came with us, and he was like, we should never have listened to that guy. He has no idea what he's talking about. What you're looking at right there is 
a saguaro skeleton. Saguaro cacti are one of the most unique parts of Sonoran desert ecology. They only grow in Arizona and in the Mexican state of Sonora. What's interesting about them is that they have a lot of the same physiology as trees. They have a woody center, they have kind of a stalk there. People compare the leaves to spines, the cactus spines, and saguaros are very, very good at retaining water. They can go, you know, up to a year, year and a half without water and be absolutely fine. When they die though, they die beautifully. The Akamel Otham, who are the natives who live over on the uh, Salt River, Maricopa, Pima Preserve, uh, S-R-P-M-I-C. Salt River Pina Maricopa Indian Community, which is the reservation in Scottsdale. Most people know it for Talking Stick Casino. The Autumn have a belief that saguaros have like the souls of people. They treat them with the same dignity that they treat people. And you can kind of understand why, because every single saguaro you see is unique. They're not like trees. You don't get lost. Every one of them is an individual. No two saguaros look alike. Dell Mountains are also really interesting too because you it's a place where you can see a lot of changes in the ecosystem, in the environment throughout the year. When you come hiking here in the spring, especially after a good wet winter, the land all turns green. There's seasonal grasses. It's as lush as being in the Arizona high country in Flagstaff or Prescott. And people don't really notice it when they just stay in the city. If they don't come out here and see the grass and see the wildflowers for themselves, you wouldn't realize how different this place looks. During the summer monsoons, a lot of the time fog will roll in here. I've hiked out by Tom's Thumb before, and the fog is as thick as in here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know what it is topographically about these mountains that makes them transform so much throughout the year, but if you come to the McDowells at a different time throughout the year, you will have a completely different experience. And that's kind of cool. We're in a desert wash right now and we're surrounded by Palo Verde trees, these green ones. This is the state tree of Arizona and they are interesting because they are a prime example of how life adapts to thrive in the harsh conditions of the Sonoran Desert. Palo Verdes, as they were evolving, started to realize, hey, there's not a whole lot of water here, but there is a lot of sunlight. So let's maximize chlorophyll photosynthesis so the bark has chlorophyll in it. That's why it's green. The bark is engaged in photosynthesis as much as these little tiny leaves are too. So it can't grow huge leaves, but it makes up for it by getting as much energy as it can from the sun with every inch of its body. And that's why you see so many more Palo Verdes in the Sonoran Desert in central and southern Arizona than any other tree, because these ones have adapted to thrive here. I used to say everything in the Sonoran Desert is trying to kill you, but it's really not. Everything in the Sonoran Desert just wants to be left alone.
State parks, city parks, anyone with mountains. More of this, please. <laughs> I think we should take the less steep one. Yeah? I'm a little out of breath. How much longer is it? Real close, that little one. I think we should do the steeper one. Let's do the steeper one. Okay. bit there it was rather steep like there wasn't any scrambling or no and that's just another example of why this place is a great place to kind of practice and train for more intensive backcountry hiking you can make your hike in the mcdowell snow preserve as challenging or as easy as you want you're always going to have cell reception because of thompson peak you're always going to be able to download a trail map if you need it. There's emergency markers, so if you get in trouble, you can just call for help with your phone. You're never going to be without reception or anything, without internet connection. And yet, you can still do some pretty tough hikes. There's an Apache reservation over there, and the Salt River, Pima, Maricopa Indian community, that's where the Akamal Otham live. And a lot of that land is non-developed, so there's an uninterrupted wildlife corridor here. But then when you look at this, you look over this ridge here, city of Scottsdale, city of Phoenix, Camelback Mountain over there, Fort Peak in the background, non-developed land, urban sprawl. Bell Pass is a really evident place where that contrast can be seen all at once. The McDowell Sonoran Preserve, where we're hiking right now, these mountains are the largest city park in the United States. 
It's about 30,500 acres. It's larger than eight national parks. People take for granted that this is here. And people often think of conservation as something that happened in the distant past. The truth is though, this park didn't exist until 1994. In the late 70s, early 80s, people were starting to move out to Scottsdale in large droves. And a lot of very wealthy developers, real estate developers, architects like Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, were taking an interest in the McDowell Mountains specifically. And Scottsdale residents thought, oh yeah, you know, they can't build into the mountains. That's part of Tano National Forest. A lot of people just assumed that this was protected land, but it wasn't. People started to notice that when large mansions started going up in the foothills of these mountains. There was a small group of people in 1990, 14 people to be exact, who wanted to save these mountains. They bought five acres of land. They called themselves the McDowell Sonoran Land Trust. Uh, now they call themselves the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. They were a nonprofit that was dedicated to buying land in these mountains, trying to preserve them. 14 people got together and decided they wanted to save these mountains. And it started small. It started with a five acre purchase. It's now 30,500 acres because those people were passionate about preserving this landscape, about preserving these mountains, protecting them, making them a place where everyone can come and enjoy and appreciate them. And now it is one of the best managed public land spaces I've ever personally been to. This rivals a lot of state and national parks in terms of quality, trail design, the ecological conservation. It's, it's incredible. And if 14 people had chosen to just be a little more apathetic, to just say, oh, the mountains will be fine, or oh, the city will figure it out. Oh, what difference am I gonna make? None of this would exist. I think that's beautiful. And I think that's a story worth telling. We did it. We did it. Post hike updates. How long did this take around? It is 1247. We started at about nine. nine. Yeah, and we also took lots of stops. Nine. You can do Bell Pass if you're just doing the out and back. Probably in about three hours, uh, two and a half if you're booking it. What's really great about the McDowell Sonoran Preserve though is that there are trails for all skill levels here. They have paved trails for people who might have, you know, mobility concerns. They're accessible. Uh, they also have very, very mountainous trails as well. If you download a map on uh, the website at the McDowell Sonoran Preserve, or just look at one of the maps at any of the major trailheads like Gateway or Lost Dog or Tom's Thumb, you can build yourself a path. And again, this is a great place to hike because you cannot get lost. You will always have cell access. There are very well marked trails to tell you exactly where you're going. You'll, if you find yourself lost, you only have to go a quarter mile, half mile until you find a way to get yourself back on track. So if you're a novice, you could ideally just do a gateway? Yeah, the gateway loop is about a four mile trail. It's one of the most popular trails in Scottsdale. You will see a lot of people on gateway. People treat it almost like a track, uh, but it's a great place to go if you're just starting out hiking. If you're doing, if you want something a little more intensive though, Bell Pass is a decent challenge, especially if you connect it with the Windgate Pass Loop or take it all the way up to Tom's Thumb. Which we did not do today. We did not we do today. We stopped Pass. at Bell Pass. It was windy. It was cold. It was windy. And to be honest, eight miles and 1,800 feet is plenty of enough of a morning challenge. Did we do eight miles? We did eight miles, yeah. Nice. Not too bad. Heck yeah. Nailed it. Heck yeah. Okay.